Your body needs nutrients to be absorbed, used for energy, and for the construction or repair of cells. Your digestive system breaks down food and liquids into their chemical components, proteins, carbs, lipids, and vitamins and minerals. The digestive system is composed of numerous organs. Food starts to be broken down as soon as it is chewed and moves from the mouth through the esophagus and stomach. Food is combined with digestive enzymes in the stomach and thereafter emptied slowly into the small intestine, which breaks down food even more, absorbs nutrients, and releases them into the bloodstream. The remainder of the wet food waste passes into your colon or large intestine. Bacteria feed on the leftovers when undigested food goes through it. The majority of the leftover water is absorbed by the large intestine wall. The process of digestion is also aided by other organs. Bile, a brownish-yellow fluid that aids in fat digestion, is produced by the liver. Bile is kept in the gallbladder until it is required. Enzymes required for the breakdown of proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates are produced by the pancreas in collaboration with the small intestine. The rectum and anus are part of a very effective disposal mechanism that expels any leftover undigested food. Which foods can I eat to assist my digestive system function better? There are foods that can support a healthy digestive system. For example, consuming foods high in probiotics or beneficial bacteria can boost the amount of beneficial bacteria in your gut microbiota, which is the 100 trillion plus bacteria that reside inside your digestive system. A balanced microbiome can lessen harmful inflammation, support regular bowel movements, and enhance immune system performance. Yogurt and kefir, a beverage similar to yogurt, are common meals that are high in probiotics. Check the label for the phrase live and active cultures. Fermented foods such as miso, a paste derived from soybeans, pickles, and sauerkraut are additional sources of probiotics. Search for the phrase naturally fermented. Prebiotics, which aid in the growth and well-being of beneficial bacteria in the digestive system, provide support to probiotics. Asparagus, garlic, onions, bananas, beans, and whole grains are all sources of prebiotics. For healthy digestion, enough fiber is also essential. Stool can go through the intestines more readily when it is softened and given greater volume by fiber. Sufficient fiber intake is also necessary for healthy digestion. Fiber makes stool softer and more substantial so that it can move through the intestines more readily. Soluble and insoluble fibers are the two different forms. Whole grains, wheat cereals, and vegetables like carrots, celery, and tomatoes contain insoluble fiber. Barley, oats, beans, nuts, and fruits like pears, apples, berries, and citrus fruits are examples of foods high in soluble fiber. Those who have difficulty eating enough fiber-rich food may be able to supplement with over-the-counter fiber in the form of capsules, chewable tablets, and powders combined with water. Which illnesses and diseases of the digestive system are common? The digestive tract is a complex piece of equipment and it isn't always flawless. Digestive health can be affected by what and how people consume. In certain individuals, the immune system inadvertently targets the digestive tract, leading to a range of digestive issues. Here is a quick overview of several prevalent illnesses and ailments that may have an impact on digestive health. 1. GERD stands for gastroesophageal reflux disease. Heartburn, often described as a burning and squeezing sensation in the chest, is a common symptom of GERD. Additional symptoms might be nausea, a bitter or sour taste in the mouth, trouble swallowing, a sore throat, wheezing, coughing, or the constant need to clear your throat. The tube that transports food from your mouth to your stomach, the esophagus, is the source of reflux disease when stomach acid and digestive enzymes flow backward into it. We refer to this backflow of stomach acid as reflux. The esophageal lining becomes inflamed due to these acids. Ignorance of GERD might result in irreversible damage to the esophagus. Two. Gluten intolerance. This illness develops when the immune system misinterprets the protein gluten, which is present in wheat, rye, and barley, as being foreign. The tiny, finger-like projections in the small intestine called villi that aid in the body's absorption of nutrients from food are harmed as the immune system battles gluten. Celiac disease manifests as fatigue, bloating, and pain in the abdomen, diarrhea, and weight loss. Three, diverticulitis as well as diverticulosis. Little pouches form and protrude via weak points in the colon's walls when diverticulosis occurs. Diverticula are tiny pouches that resemble balloons, while moderate cramps, constipation, or bloating are rare symptoms of diverticulosis. Most patients with the condition don't have any. 
Diverticulitis is the term for the illness that develops when the diverticula become inflamed or infected. Serious side effects from diverticulitis might include an abscess, a perforation, which are tears in the colon wall, intestinal blockage due to internal scarring, or an unnatural connection between two organs called a fistula. Diverticulitis is most commonly characterized by lower abdominal pressure, cramps, constipation, diarrhea, fever, nausea, vomiting, chills, and abdominal pain and tenderness. IBD stands for inflammatory bowel disease. IBD develops when the immune system inadvertently targets the intestines and causes tissue inflammation. There are two main forms of IBD ulcerative colitis, or UC, and Crohn's disease. The intestinal wall's deeper layers and internal lining become inflamed when someone has Crohn's disease. Ulcers, fissures, and cracks can result from these areas thickening or wearing away in certain places. A pus-filled pocket known as an abscess can form as a result of inflammation. Crohn's disease is incurable and never goes away. The following are typical signs of Crohn's disease. Stomach pain that is frequently worse after meals, mainly near or below the navel. Diarrhea that could be blood-filled loss of weight, weakness or exhaustion, lesions near the anus, discomfort when passing gas, severe mouth sores, appetite loss, and back or joint discomfort, as well as additional symptoms like skin rashes or inflammation of the eyes. Ulcers arise from inflammation in the colon, the lining of the large intestine, in patients with UC. Bleeding, diarrhea, exhaustion and weight loss may result from this. Depending on the location and intensity of the inflammation in the large intestine, other symptoms may manifest differently. Among them are abdominal cramps, particularly in the lower abdomen, a persistent feeling of urgency to go to the bathroom, minimal prior notice before a bowel movement, loss of appetite, fever, dry mouth, and other symptoms not related to the intestines. Syndrome of the Irritable Bowel or IBS Frequent episodes of diarrhea, constipation, or both, together with bloating and gas, are the hallmarks of IBS. The symptoms can differ in intensity and length. While some are severe and persist for several weeks, others are minor and come and go. Some people experience episodes every few months or even years. Although there is rarely a cure for IBS, the illness can be managed with medication, dietary adjustments, and stress reduction techniques. Finally, kidney stones. Within the gallbladder, a pear-shaped pouch located directly below the liver, hardened bile fragments known as gallstones can develop. The body may digest fat more easily thanks to bile. The majority of gallstones don't hurt or cause any symptoms. The intestines are a route by which small stones can exit the body. Gallstones, however, may produce symptoms if they become lodged in the gallbladder's small opening or in the ducts that empty it. Abdominal pain is one of the symptoms. It usually occurs high in the abdomen, frequently in the middle or on the right side where the gallbladder is placed and it can also radiate to the right shoulder blade. The gallbladder must be surgically removed if symptoms return or if it gets inflamed. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more healthcare-related content. Like and give your comment. Thank you. Wise World Healthcare.